not make the playoffs every year? Well, you know what? Times are changing, buddy. Uh, okay, yeah, you, you can spend take some your... more money. Hi, I'm Jason Twaddell. And I'm Chris Carlson. And we're from Ball Floor Plan, and we're here at Van Wettering Greenhouses to bring to you a four-part series of videos on how to be a baseball fan for a team that never makes it to the World Series. No, it's a propagation video. Oh. So we're here to help you grow the best liner that you can every time you stick a cutting. It's a four-part series on how to grow a better liner. Let's get started. Spring training and preseason baseball are over and now we're hitting the regular season. What does that mean for cuttings? We're talking about stage one of propagation. Now what is stage one of propagation? Stage one is taking from a cutting all the way to callus. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. Again, stage one is cutting stuck all the way through callus. So we're going to be looking at that process. How long does it generally take? three to ten days. Now that's quite a wide range, but we're dealing with quite a few different crops. You've got low mist, high mist regimes. So think of a verbena. Verbena doesn't require a lot of mist. It callates quickly. It's probably on the low end at the three-day mark. Whereas an osteo where it requires a lot of mist, it's going to be up closer to that ten-day level in terms of how long it takes to get the callus on the cutting. So the first step in stage one is to think about a surfactant. Now what is a surfactant going to provide you? It's going to minimize stress on the cutting right after it's stuck. You get that surfactant down on the cutting, it's going to break the surface tension on the leaf and every single mist cycle or regime that goes through in duration is going to be more effective because now the surface tension is broken and that water is going to get into the cutting. We're trying to rehydrate the cutting, so we need that water in the cutting. We're talking about moisture management and mist strategy as part of stage one. The goal here is to rehydrate the cuttings that we just stuck. So we're raising the relative humidity so that these cuttings stay turgid. We want our cuttings to not dry down at any point in this first three to five day window. It's really critical balancing act here where we have to always keep the, the leaf surface wet but not too wet because if it's too wet it's going to break down. So, at the five day mark, you're looking at something like osteos, where there's a higher mist regime. They're going to need five days of that high mist cycle, heavy mist regime, so that the stem cells will start to switch from stem production to root production and start to form that callus. When you look at a crop like verbena that requires less mist, you're talking more in the three day range, where they're going to start to switch to that callus almost as soon as three days, and you may be able to bring that mist cycle and that regime down. We're holding the soil moisture at a level four throughout the process. Again, it's a balancing act. You don't want to go to three and you don't want to be at five. So again, we're rehydrating our cuttings and this is stage one. Most times you've got a computer controlled system to automate this, but if you have to do it on your own, you want to raise that relative humidity so your cuttings are always turgid. As I walk through this zone, I'm thinking the ideal environment for a propagation zone. I'm getting a little warm. It feels kind of like a sauna, but that's what we want it to feel like. It should feel different from all the other greenhouse zones in your range. What's the ideal temperature in propagation? Well, you want your soil media to stay between 68 and 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So, that's a wide range. Really, we want to narrow it down 70 to 72, but I'm from California where I grow plugs and liners. I'm holding my soil media at 68 because I've got high light and warm daytime conditions. Here in New York at, at Van Wettering Greenhouse, we're going to want to hold our soil media at probably 70 degrees because they're growing under lower light conditions and lower daytime temperatures. So it's really critical. The most important part of this whole environment conversation is hold your soil media above 68 degrees or 70 degrees, depending on your conditions. What should your nighttime temperature be for the air? Nowhere below 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And your daytime high should be somewhere between 68 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, when we talk relative humidity, that's another aspect of why it feels so hot in here. I'm almost going to start sweating because we're holding our relative humidity between 80 and 90 percent. 
Now most greenhouses or a lot of greenhouses are using computer control to achieve this so they don't have to put a lot of thought in it. The computer just does it for them. But if you're a small grower, what techniques could you use? Well, you could be wetting down the floors on your, on your own to raise that relative humidity. You could also build small tunnels on the bench out of plastic so that you have a little microclimate of that hot sauna with high humidity and high temps. So the other technique of, of a small grower would be to wet down the, the underneath of the bench too, to just get a little more moisture in the zone. Again, high relative humidity, but don't go too high because then you'll get breakdown in botrytis. Again, then the last thing is light. If you can see, it's kind of a little bit darker in here. Our cuttings aren't taking up very much moisture because they don't have roots yet. So we're trying to keep them turgid. We need light levels that are lower, between 1300 and 1500 foot candles. This injector is providing fuller feed to the cuttings in stage one of propagation. We would recommend about 50 parts per million nitrogen delivered to cuttings in stage one. Generally, your cuttings don't need any fertilizer. You can run clear water because the cuttings don't have roots yet, so they're not taking up any nutrients. However, if you over mist your cuttings, you're gonna leach the nutrients out, and you may need to come back with a spray over the top of them at about 75 parts per million to, to build that nitrogen back into the cutting. You don't wanna have leached cuttings because in the end, that's gonna to lead to soft, weak liners. So once that callus is formed, then you're gonna to wanna to bump the nutrition levels up between 75 and 100 parts per million nitrogen. Stage two has started. So once stage one ends, we've got a callus cutting. And once stage two ends, we've got a rooted liner. You can see the roots to the edge of our liner here in this osteospermum. So now that we're gonna talk about stage two and what we need to do, we've defined it. I'm gonna put these cuttings back in their cell. And we're gonna talk about what we need to do as a mist strategy. That's our first aspect of stage two. So the mist strategy for stage two is similar to stage one. However, we're starting to wean off. This is the first time we've really started to change our mist strategy. We have to force these cuttings to strike a root. If we don't force them and push them to strike a root, they're gonna sit there in their propagation house, they're gonna be happy and fat, and they're not gonna do anything but callus up. They won't ever really strike a root. So this is our first chance to start to wean these cuttings off of mist, and this is also the first stage where the night mist has been uh, taken away completely. So you have to make sure during stage two that you are pulling the mist back so that you can make these cuttings do what you need them to do, which is to strike a root so that they're standing on their own. The next aspect of stage two production that we're gonna talk about is moisture management. As with any level of uh, crop production, moisture management is crucial. So what do we wanna do in stage two to get those cuttings to root as far as soil moisture is concerned? Remember we talked about in stage one to be at a level four, same thing applies in stage two. We need to be at a level four to get that root to strike. Potentially you could be a little bit drier like a level three, but you definitely don't want to be up to a level five. Level four is your perfect stage to be at during the stage two root initiation part. So make sure that you're sort of in the middle of the road there, too wet, saturated soil, and you're not gonna get anything but a big callus. Too dry, and the cutting might stall out, and that callus will never initiate roots. So make sure, level four moisture for stage two. Now we're gonna start talking about fertility for stage two. So we've been losing nutrition out of these cuttings ever since they were taken off our stock plants in Guatemala or in Nicaragua, and we shipped them to you. And this is our first real chance to get that nutrition back into the plant. So hopefully we were foliar feeding, as Chris was talking about in the first part of this video, putting a little bit of uh, fertilizer in the mist. So now that we might have a little bit of EC in that soil, if we weren't foliar feeding, then there's a good chance that the EC of our soil is really low at this point. And this is our chance to come in with some uh, soil applications of fertilizer so that we can get that EC back in there and get our cuttings really moving. 
we need to make sure that we're using a well-balanced feed between 75 and 150 parts per million nitrogen and balancing out our moisture management requirements with the fertility needs of these plants that are just now starting to root. Now that we've finished talking about fertility in stage two, we're gonna talk about control growth management and PGRs. In my hand here, I've got a tray of Endurascape Red Verbena. And you can see that the nodes are stacked up nice and tight. We've got nice, compact, control growth plants. That's exactly what we're looking for in stage two. So when you're coming out of stage two, you wanna be sure that you've either used your PGRs or changed your environment and started to dry the cutting down and make sure that you don't get stretched out cuttings when you're coming out of stage two and into stage three. This is the opportunity for us to use PGRs for really the first time. When you do use PGRs in stage two, make sure that you're using softer PGRs just to tone the crop and not really shut it down. You wanna be sure when you're coming out of stage two that you have toned and not stunted the, car the crop. So make sure that PGRs are a part of your process. They're in the toolbox, use them if you need them. If we're applying chemicals and pesticides to our liners, then we must have moved on to the IPM and disease portion of stage one and two production. We're gonna start out with the IPM part. What do we need to worry about on insect management? Really fungus gnats and shore flies are the two main pests that we wanna worry about. So what do we wanna to do to make sure we control those? We wanna have good scouting. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're, we're finding those pest populations before they pop up. And one of the best ways to control these insects is to have preventative controls. So go ahead and go in, put in preventative applications to make sure that you don't have any issues with fungus gnats and shore flies. The second part we wanna talk about is disease control. Because we're propagating these cuttings in stage one and two in a really high humidity environment with low amounts of air movement, we're in a great environment for disease control. Because of that, we wanna put preventative fungicide applications out. One of the best things we can do is use a broad spectrum multi-site uh, fungicide like a daconil as a preventative measure in the first week of production. You know, you did a pretty good job covering the uh, stage one and stage two, even though you're an Oakland A's fan. Because Kansas City Royals fans are always giving us trouble. You did a good job with stage two, too. Thanks. So let's go into the, the biggest mistakes of stage one. The first one is allowing your cuttings to dry down in those first three to five days. That's a huge mistake. It is, it is. You know, one of the big things we want to remember is we don't want to over mist either. So drying them down is a big problem. Over misting, that can be a problem too. We want to be right in the middle. Now, Jason, don't let your cuttings go below 70 degrees for that soil media temperature, that's really critical. Your cuttings are not gonna do well if that soil temperature drops below 70 degrees. That's right, and overall, just make sure that we have the right environment. So not putting that right environment together is something that people make mistakes with all the time. Too high light levels, too much air moving. Those are things that can really get you in trouble. And finally, we just gotta minimize stress. If you stress your cuttings out in stage one, you, you're gonna have damp off, you're gonna lose stuff, no stress on the cuttings. Yeah, so what about stage two? What are some of our biggest mistakes in stage two? One of the biggest things we talked about was not weaning those cuttings off of mist. Yeah, and the next one was oversaturated soil moisture because you've got to have those cuttings needing water so they'll strike that root. Right, and that goes in with over misting, right? So if you miss too much and don't wean them off, then you end up with saturated soil. It's a good point. So the next thing would be not eliminate the night mist, right? So we're weaning our cuttings off of mist. We want to make sure there is no night mist. It needs to be off at stage two. Another one is fertilizer. A lot of people forget that their cuttings, once they strike the root, they need fertilizer. So if you're not fertilizing, you're not gonna be successful and you're not gonna bulk that liner. That's right, and then neglecting IPM and disease control. Those are big issues for both stage one and stage two. So the regular season's over, it's time for the playoffs. Here is your team making it? No, I don't think so. I think my team's making no, it. I'm pretty sure we beat you last year in the wildcard uh, game. Remember that? All right. And we let's, went to the World Series. Let's go to the playoffs. All right, let's see what happens. So that you can get the crops to specific to that. So the ladies in the back. I can't say so. See if you can hit my curveball. You bum. Come on, old man, you probably got a Greg Maddox arm. You're yeah. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. 